Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys the first perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, will Kevin Durant regret signing with the Brooklyn Nets? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever... Uh, we drop our content also be on the lookout for our dreamers pro premium um, um, platform that we're launching this week and be on the lookout for dreamerspro.com which is coming at the end of the month so anyway let me get into this topic here because i've been kind of following this story um for a bit now and it's one of these stories that <laughs> i think is going to have one of these sad endings in the end of the season right i mean i could be wrong but thus far uh that's what it's looking like right now so i've been following the brooklyn nets so far and if you guys have checked the nba standings recently the Brooklyn Nets, if the playoffs were to start today, would be number 10. They have a 5-6 and six record. Going into this season, looking at all the talent that they had, again, looking at all the hype behind the team by people like Stephen A. Smith and others who already put them in the, in, in the Eastern Conference Finals, if you if you took all of those things you know into account and then look at the team now, you'd be very surprised to see that they're doing this poorly. And there's a number of reasons for that, which I'm going to get into in today's video. Now, first of all, let's talk about how it ended with KD and, and Golden State. Go Kevin Durant went to Golden State and won two titles for that organization. Helped them win two titles. Was definitely the best player in those championship rounds. With the two, and that's why he has uh, two back-to-back -back Finals MVPs uh, on his resume because he just he just went out there and just balled. He was the one matchup on the floor. He was the one person that made that team pretty much unstoppable, and everyone knew it. That's why so many people were up in arms when he decided to go sign with the Golden State Warriors. They knew they were like, okay, there's no beating this guy now that he's there playing with these guys. So. They got him. He won those titles, right? And after he won those NBA titles, Kevin Durant fell for it and allowed certain people in the media and certain people in the sports world to kind of guilt him into winning, um, guilt him about winning those two NBA titles with the with the Golden State Warriors. He fell for it and he was ridiculed for it. You know, he went to the team that couldn't be beaten. When in reality, there have been so many super teams in the history of the NBA, it's not even funny. But for whatever reason, for Kevin Durant, they decided to kind of hang that over his head and made him feel like what he accomplished wasn't what uh, wasn't spectacular. When in reality, it was. A lot of people made the argument: you went to a 73 and nine team that lost. So I mean, how good were they? You were good enough to lose in the finals. They lost to LeBron James. So how could they be that good if they lost, right? To me, an all-time great team is a team that has a very good record in the NBA regular season and goes to the finals and close out the deal and wins the NBA championship. The 72 Bulls, the 72 and 10 Bulls were, uh, were was was the best team ever uh, according to their record for what they did in the NBA regular season and going to the finals and closing it out and and, and Michael Jordan doing it at his, at his advanced age of 35 years old. Jordan won his last NBA title at the age of 35 years old. He was the best player, he was the finals MVP at the age of 35. That was an incredible team. Not the 73 and 9 uh, uh Golden State Warriors because they didn't close out the they didn't close out the deal. There've been other teams that have had great regular season records, but if you don't win the title, you can't be considered an all-time great team. Just like the New England Patriots, they had I think they went like 15 and 1 or 16 and 0 or something like that in the regular season. And then they went to the playoffs and then they lost. For them to be considered one of the greatest team or the greatest team ever, you got to close the deal. And this team didn't. And once Kevin Durant got there, he put him over the top indefinitely. And for whatever reason, people held, oh, da, 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 da. It just people that wanted to fit a certain narrative. And he fell for it. So he decided after being there for, I think, two or three years, after injuring himself with his Achilles tendons tear, he decided that um, he wanted to go play with his favorite, oh, with, his, with his best friend. In Kyrie Irving uh, with the Brooklyn Nets, right? Which is a decision I believe that he may regret long term. But he decided to go play uh, uh, with Ky with Kyrie, and the minute he decided to make that move, people like Stephen A. Smith automatically picked them to be the favorites in the East, right? They were like, "Oh, this team is going to be to the Eastern Conference. They're going to go to the Eastern Conference Finals with KD and Kevin uh, and Kyrie Irving, who are going to be putting on a show and they're going to be balling and blah 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 and blah 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 and it's going to be an that, that's you know that's Stephen A. Smith, right? But I was a bit leery for a few reasons. Number one, KD's health. We hadn't seen what he was going to look like 
coming back to an NBA court because he was just coming off an Achilles tear, right? And that's one of the most, that's probably the most detrimental injury that can happen to an NBA player is the Achilles tear, right? You saw what it did to Kobe Bryant. Now, granted, Kobe was 34 years old at the time, so it was going to have it. No, was he 34? Yeah, he was 34 years old at the time, so the effect was going to be much greater. But Kevin Durant is like 31, I believe, so he's a younger guy. So, and because of how, how slender his body is and how he plays, he doesn't rely so much on athleticism. Many speculated that, listen, this type of injury wouldn't affect him the way that it would, for example, a Russell Westbrook or maybe a LeBron, who, who these players rely a lot on their on, on, on the athleticism to do what they have to do. So he decided to go play with this team, right? Early into the season, what happened? Spencer Dinwiddie, who was a great player for that team, gave him a lot of depth and did a lot of things for that team, made him a very, uh, let's say, a dynamic team. He got injured and he was gone. So with, with immediately, he, the moment he got injured, they lost a lot of their depth. Then, what else happened with the Brooklyn Nets? Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving and his antics and his reputation for kind of not getting along in certain locker rooms. Before the season even started, I believe Kyrie Irving went on a podcast somewhere and said, we don't even need a coach. What's the big deal? After the Brooklyn Nets went out there and invested in a brand new coach and Steve, uh, and Steve Nash, uh, uh, a coach that both of these stars vouched for and said, this is the coach that they want. Kyrie Irving said, oh, we don't, need, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need a coach, right? And then I was like, okay. And a lot of people were looking at Kyrie kind of sideways. Then I started watching some of the Brooklyn Nets games. And I was looking at the games and looking at how these two guys were kind of playing on the court together. And then I, and then I, at a certain point, I understood that a lot in those in a lot of those fourth quarters, Kyrie Irving kind of looked like a ball hog. There was one game that, that they were playing against the Atlanta Hawks, and it was a very close game. And Kyrie Irving in that fourth quarter was not even looking in KD's direction. Why? Because he was, I think he had a bad first three quarters. I think up until that point, he had like 12 points or something like that. And he wanted to get his buckets. Although KD was the hot hand, and Kyrie went for minutes without even looking at KD's in KD's direction. I'm like. How do you have a player like Kevin Durant on your team, the only matchup on the court that cannot be accounted for, and you don't go to him? And then KD at the end of the press, at the end of the game, made his normal excuses. Oh well, every team I've been on, I've led that team in shot selection, and you know, uh, you know, it's not going to be a problem because me and Kyrie are friends and this and this and this. That's what he says, but that's the same thing he said about Russell Westbrook. How did that turn out? Is he still playing with Russell Westbrook? I thought they were buddy, but Kevin Durant would cuss somebody out if you try to come at Russell Westbrook. And now you saw the the reaction that he got from Charles Barkley when Charles Barkley Barkley asked him about uh, Kyrie Irving. He just gave him a one word answer because he took offense to that. But that was the same offense that you took with, with Russell Westbrook, and then you ended up leaving him. Now I'm not saying that KD is going to leave uh uh Kyrie Irving anything like that but I think he's going to start regretting uh, re regretting the fact that he signed with this team because why Kyrie Irving then decides out of nowhere that he's not going to join the team anymore to play games he texts his teammates doesn't inform his coaching staff or the the head of the organization that he's not going to show up to games and they got to one game and they asked Steve Nash hey uh why didn't Kyrie Irving why didn't Kyrie why didn't Kyrie Irving play and he said I didn't even know he was going to play until I got here and we haven't seen Kyrie Irving in action. I think he's missed the last two or three games. The Brooklyn Nets are out there struggling to get wins. KD is coming off of an injury. I think he had to miss some games because of COVID protocols. And this is what's happening. This is the situation that Kevin Durant finds himself in. There's no way in hell that KD would be going through a smidgen of this type of drama had he stayed with the Golden State Warriors. But somehow... He let people guilt him into feeling like as if he didn't accomplish anything, to feeling like his NBA championships were not worth it. Meanwhile, other players have done the exact same thing, but all of a sudden, because it's KD, they held it over his head. He felt guilty. He listened to his critics, which is something he shouldn't have done, and now he finds himself playing with the Brooklyn Nets, who have a 5-6 and six record and not even in the playoffs as it starts, and we don't know when Kyrie Irving is going to come back. I don't know what the hell is going on with this team, but it's something to pay, uh, worth paying attention to, and for me, I think it's been a total mess so what i want to know from you guys is do you think uh, kevin durant will regret signing with the brooklyn nets or do you think it's no big deal it's just a minor hiccup and things are going to work themselves out in the end whatever you guys think please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below again if you enjoyed the video please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content again if you enjoyed this video be sure to check out the next video that we have coming up after this once again this is charles here from dreamers pro wishing you guys an amazing day catch you guys on the next episode peace